Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is Thursday, October the 4th, and I am in, uh, well, I guess west of Abilene, Texas, a small town called Merkel, Texas, which is all west of Dallas. I'll be doing some ministry tonight at the Fountain uh, Gate Church, and uh, I'm going to be interviewing today my special guest, Joe Ellen and this will be her first ever Facebook Live, so I'm excited about what is going to uh, happen on our interview today. And there she is. Hello, Joellen. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm doing awesome. <laughs> doing awesome. How's the uh, weather in uh, Connersville, Indiana? Um, it's about 75 degrees and raining. <laughs> raining. All right. Well, I have not seen rain in two and a half to three months. So as I've been traveling out west and uh, down in Texas today, and I'm going to be sharing this with a couple of groups so that we can get some uh, people to share. I love looking at your post because yeah. I feel like I'm traveling the world with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been quite, a, quite the adventure going from a kid from a cornfield in Indiana to traveling all over the United States. It's amazing Canada. what God's done in your life. Yeah, it's blowing me away. It really away. is. I had no, no plans to deliver people from Jezebel demons <laughs> when I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to just get off the farm and make some money so I could buy clothes that weren't all patched up and uh, had holes in them. So. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, I'll share with a couple more groups and we'll get started. Um, so for those of you, I'm going to let you know how we got connected. It was about, I guess it was about two years ago that I had written a book called Restored to Freedom, and, which talks about the Jezebel spirit and Leviathan spirits and how to get set free from that. And then a friend of mine said, you need to connect with Joellen. So I remember, I think I sent you a friend request, and of course you have over 5,000, so it's really hard. You have to off people from the Joellen Stevens Island <laughs> in order to become a friend. So ultimately, um, we ended up talking and uh, you had shared a lot of stories and testimonies in your life about some Jezebel attacks that you've had to endure and going through. And so we had a lot of similarities in what uh, our experiences were. And then we subsequently have done some ministry together in Noblesville and on the east side of Indianapolis. And so the Lord's kind of connected us. You've uh, I know I had a lot of blogs on the Elijah list that uh, probably more than anybody. I and mean, you've been on there since what year did you start um, having the articles that you had posted picked up? Um, about 2010. 2010. Okay. So about eight years. Yeah. So you're very prophetic, very gifted. And being a prophet, you get to enjoy <laughs> having to deal with Jezebel, just like Elijah did. <laughs> right. So lucky, lucky. You know, in fact, uh, there was a a prophet that called me out in the 80s and uh, it's funny interesting he said God he told me the call of my life and all and then he said but this spirit of jealousy is going to follow you around all the days of your life and I thought uh. oh great <laughs> but it always it kind of always had it was kind of weird and I but the thing of it is I've never understood what there is to be je jealous of but it's spiritual, you yeah. know, it's, it has to do with the call on your life. And that spirit is what op opens the door in most cases for the spirit of Jezebel to attack because it, yeah. I, I don't know if you teach that, but I know that, uh, in my, in my case, a lot of times it's been that spirit of jealousy that was a door opener All right. uh, for the attack, but then they want to buddy up to you. And right. be your best friend or or whatever. Yeah. And um, then all, all of a sudden you're like, what happened? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. In in my case, this lady that uh, the first time I had a really bad attack, I was praying for a prayer partner, and um, watch out what you pray for. <laughs> yep. And the funny thing of it is, I fell down, <laughs> rolled down the steps in front of my house, and broke my leg. And this woman was in the medical field. 
Okay. And um, she she said, I'll take you to um, all your doctor appointments and stuff because my husband was always gone at the time he was. But well, wasn't on that the road nice of her? Wasn't that sweet of her? Was it? Yeah, it was very <laughs> nice of her. <laughs> In fact, you know, I thought she. I couldn't believe that. She, what am I trying to say? She was just the best friend I ever had. I kept saying to myself, wow, I can't believe somebody could love you that much and be as sweet as she is. I've never met anybody because she was polite. She was kind. Yeah. She would do anything for me. But that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Later, and, and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but at the end of this whole story, God gave me the scriptures and Proverbs. I was going to read them in a minute, but about flattery mm. and how that flattery, uh, you know, it, especially if you're uncovered by a mate or something. Yeah. Uh, if you don't have a mate that's covering you, that's not going to church, that's, you know, whatever, and they, they don't encourage you, they don't, uh, then somebody will come along and will do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Encourage your mates. I'm just saying yeah. because Jezebel's out there waiting to right to jump. But but listen to these scriptures. If are you ready for this yes. yet, yeah. or are you want yeah, to say ahead. some other stuff? Yeah, go ahead. Um, let me go back up here. Uh, it says it's Proverbs. What is it? Two, I think, and. Six, starting with six. For the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. What happened to me was I, the Lord told me at the end of it too that I started listening to her and calling her for advice. And she was like all this um, psychology, you know, stuff. She was talking about to me and um, I thought it was going to help me with my marriage at the time yeah and um, in case anybody don't know I've been married before <laughs> and um, she I would call her and and God told me later on he said you started calling her instead of coming to me yeah and so I didn't have his wisdom I was listening to worldly wisdom about it and the funny thing is it was like a it wasn't a, it was a while before that. I thought I had it all together. I mean, I was teaching uh, women. I was uh, leading worship. I was doing all this stuff. And that's another thing about Jezebel. Jezebel always wants to friend mm -hmm. and be friends with people that are in leadership in the church. Yes. If you're thinking church-wise. Yes. That's what happened. And, and she came in and buddied up to me, and um, they want to be in the worship, yeah, or they want to be friends with people in the worship or prayer meetings. Yeah, that's the two things they want to shut down the most. Right. Those two things, and the word, of course, but or with the pastor's daughter, or with, and so if you're a pastor's daughter and you got somebody like that, mm, or a pastor's wife, watch out. Right. But yeah. anyway, at the end. Um, he gave me these scriptures and he said, for the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge. Out of his mouth comes up wisdom and knowledge. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the way of it, preserves the way of his saints. Mm -hmm. See, I wasn't going to him though. Right. I, and I was a word person. I knew the word. I knew it. Yeah. And I mean, I was the Hebrew and Greek and, and taught and, all of that and God spoke to me one day and he said take heed if you think you stand lest you fall you've got all of your formulas down but I don't work in formulas right and so I was like what did he why did he say that to me I you know I get up every morning at five o'clock and walk and pray and and do all the stuff I do uh -huh. but if I if I stopped listening to him and started listening to someone else and I didn't you know, I thought he'd sent this person into my life. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, yeah, it's so, so hard, anyway, so hard to perceive because the Jezebel spirit wants to take the place of the true Holy Spirit. It's like a counterfeit Holy Spirit. So it wants you to draw it, and it'll be your nicest friend. It will buy you oftentimes, give you gifts, try to draw you in, and then it, and it's hard to perceive it until finally you start to see that. Wait a minute, there's a nasty side to that person, and that nasty side may not come out for several months. That's, that's right. Yeah. And it didn't come out for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let me finish these scriptures, and then I'll get to my okay. testimony. Yep. It said, when wisdom enters into your heart, knowledge is pleasant in your soul. Discretion, discretion shall preserve you. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver you from the evil man, from the man that speaks forward things. In other words, those kind of flattery things. Yes. Um, who leaves the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they, they forward in their paths to deliver you from the strange woman. That's Jezebel. Yeah. Even from the stranger, which flatters with her words. See, she flatters with her words and tells you, um, it's all about you. Uh, you're the best minister in the world. You know, that spirit followed Paul around. Yes. While he was preaching, and it would say, these are the servants of the Most High God. Right. Hear them. Yes. It was saying all the right things, but then it says, Paul, being grieved, turned about. And, and it followed him for many days before he was he, the discernment came. And, and God told me, he said, that grieving is the discernment of spirits. You were... Even though, you know, you things on the outside were looking like she was all wonderful and all good and all that. He said, there was something inside of you that was grieving because I cried during that whole period. Something about it, I would just weep for some reason. I knew there was something wrong, but I just couldn't figure it out. Right. And um, so to, to keep you from the strange one, which flatters with the words, who forsakes the guide of her youth. In other words, she has no covering whatsoever. Uh-huh. And she won't come in. Jezebel will not come under a covering. Right. She, even when she acts submissive, yeah. it's for her own gain. Yeah. Right. Hey, yeah, I remember, in fact, my... my I love my, that. Fr I think Francis Frangipan said that one time. Even when yeah. she seems I, I submissive, the, it's, it's to yeah. benefit her. I, 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 remember, and, um, I remember this. My, my, which, yeah, yeah my, my, huh? my wife... Um, my wife, who had the Jezebel spirit, uh, told this in front of uh, a pastor of mine at lunch um, before I ended up separating from her. She said, I will never submit to a man. And that's exactly what Jezebel will do. They'll say, I oh, won't yeah. submit to anybody. Yeah. So continue on. And that's what we're seeing right now in the country. Yes. We're seeing that spirit. It's, it's widespread. I'm, I know people get upset with me on Facebook over this, but I'm telling you. Talk about it. Yes, there are women that have been, you know, treated terribly. Right. And yes, I agree with that. But it's gone way too far right now. Yes. And I can't tell it right now, but there's things that's happened here with us. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what's going on in this country. I, and, but I can't tell this story yet. Right, right. It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, um, so this is a scary thing right here. Who forsakes the guide of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house inclines to death and her pass unto the dead. None that go into her return again neither take they hold of the paths of life. That's a scary thought to me. Yeah. But Jezebel does not submit. So she's looking for a vic you know, she's looking for a victim. During that time when I was going through that with her, I had this dream. God was trying to warn me and I didn't understand it at the time. I didn't understand it till later. Mm -hmm. And um in the dream there was a woman in the middle of the parking lot at church and all these people were coming out of church and walking up to this woman. 
and it looked like this woman that I was had befriended, but uh -huh. I didn't ever see her face in the dream. If you know what I mean, those kind of right, dreams. Right, right. And uh, all these people were walking up to her, and she'd put her hand up. And when she put her hand up, she'd lay hands on them, and they'd fall out. And I thought, oh, that's so wonderful. Uh -huh. And so I, in the dream, started to walk towards her, and I saw these people laying around her uh, as if they had fallen out in the spirit. And um, when I got up to her, all of a sudden I looked down, and, and the people were laying inside of pentagrams. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and when I got up to her, it was too late because I was sucked in by that, what seemed like the Holy Spirit. Yeah. This was the weirdest thing of that whole thing. That spirit, uh, God told me in the dream then, he said, that's a false Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's like the Holy Spirit. It feels like love. Right. It feels like that person you know what i'm talking about oh, yeah. of course yeah but it, it, that's what ha i mean it, it feels like and i remember the day it was almost like the day and the hour i was in my uh prayer room and that spirit just came it was like it came over me and um i thought i've never loved a person like that in my life like she was so kind and so good and so I thought full of Jesus. Yeah. But it was a false Holy Spirit. Yeah. And um, and so she started taking me to my appointments, and and then um, time went on, and um, all of a sudden my husband at the time, uh, he and I split up, and she said she was married, and she said you can come over to our house, and uh, you can. Uh, sleep in Heather's bed. Heather, this is a, an important part of the testimony. Heather was, I sh shouldn't even have told her name, but the little girl, uh -huh. she, um, she had died at about six years old of some kind of rare disease. Okay. So this woman would use this mercy gift, my mercy gift, against me. Yeah, yeah. And she would say, oh, I'm I'm thinking about Heather, you got to come over and you got to help me and don't go to prayer meeting today. You don't need to, those people just, all those people do, they just, uh, they just use you there. They don't really care about you yeah. and so on and so forth. And uh, so that hooked me. That was the hook right, right there. Right. One day on, uh, on my birthday, her and her husband handed me a package. And I opened this package, and it was a long box about this. <laughs> you can't see me, yeah. but about that long. And it was, I opened it up, and there was a doll inside. And I said, what is that? And she said, that was the doll we were going to give to my daughter before she died, but she died, and we feel like you're like our daughter now. Ah, wow. <laughs> I mean, she was, this is, Jezebel's soul ties you to her by giving you things. Yes. Uh, they'll buy you things. They'll take you on trips. They will, um, you know, all the stuff. We went, her and I went to Gatlinburg after my grandmother died. And uh, we went down there, and we were going to go through, you know, the shops and all that kind of stuff. And uh, there was a picture down there of Jesus that I loved. Uh -huh. And uh, it was that where Jesus is holding a sheep in his hand, and, and the sheep's all, you know, laying on his breast, and there's nail scars in his hands. Uh -huh. And it was somebody had drawn it it was a like a pencil type drawing or whatever you call that and um i i love that so much that i she bought it for me uh -huh. years later after doug and i were married uh -huh. years i had that hanging on my wall uh -huh. i mean wow. 10 or 
12 years, I had it hanging on my wall. And God said, I want you to take that down and burn it. And I said, but Jesus, it's a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, take it in the kitchen. He said, what do you think of every time you look at it? Uh-huh. And I went, her? Yeah. And he said, that's right. Right. He said, the devil will use sights, smells, anything to remind you and bring you back to that feeling that the he wants you to have. Yes. Yeah. And so I took it in the kitchen. I set it in the kitchen sink and set it on fire and tears ran down my face. Hold it. Wow. After Doug and I got together, I, I got very ill with diabetes. Uh, I went through the change of life uh, and fibromyalgia everything i was never sick a day in my life till this jezebel attack all that stuff came on me uh -huh. and i still had that doll in my because i i couldn't i couldn't bear to turn loose of that doll because uh -huh. i felt like i was betraying somebody or right you know because that spirit will make you feel guilty yes as you know yeah i mean it'll make you feel like you know, oh my gosh, you are so unspiritual. Right, right. <laughs> you know, or, or you are just the most unspiritual person there is. Or you're ungrateful. And, um, you're ungrateful. You know, I did this for you. You owe me yes. for the rest of your life. Yes. You know, that's what they'll try to get you to do. And they'll make all, what I've noticed is like the Jezebel spirited people, they will make statements that are so obvious now to me. I'm like, really? You think I'm going to fall for that? I don't think so. But they try and say like, poor me, poor me. And, or I did this for you. I did this and remind you all the things so that you. Self-pity. Right. Yeah. And make you feel like, because it's playing on your, like I said, your mercy gift. Mm -hmm. And um, the sad part of it is when you go through that, it's almost like you have to, it's almost like you, you feel like you harden your heart and 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 it's it's a hard thing to go yeah. through yeah it's, it's hard, hard, thing. hard to trust but god all the whole time he's delivering us from uh people pleasing yeah and it's hard to trust other there, people because you think that you, you can't trust anybody you know once you've gotten a person that's so no. and nice it's like wow now my radar is up <laughs> everybody's got Jezebel now <laughs> until they prove it differently over time and that's sad that you have to get to that state but yeah yeah people need to know that when you go through that you can't you feel like you can't trust anybody later i yeah. mean nobody you because you're always feeling like you can't discern right that's right. what the enemy wants to that's exactly what the enemy wants to do he wants you to think that you can't discern and and i beat myself up for 10 years after that thinking you know what did i do to cause you know what did I do? Yeah, it makes, to cause her to. It makes you feel crazy. Think that I would. Yeah, it makes you, know. you feel crazy. It makes you feel like something that you did that was wrong to make you feel like uh, you got to feel guilty. And it's like, wait yeah. a minute, no, I didn't do anything wrong. They were the ones that were the, the demonic ones. And another thing, it will, um, if you're if you get sick because it brings sickness with yes. it. If you get sick, it'll tell you you can't get healed because you, you, you did all that. You went through all that or whatever. It'll make you not believe can't so you can't believe for healing sometimes. Right. Yeah. Um, let me get back to my story. I tell you, it's so crazy. I told Nelson earlier. I said I, I only told this about three times all the way through because. Yeah, I, f I always feel like people will not believe it. They they don't they think you're crazy or something. Right. Well, uh, so things went on, and uh, I I moved over there to their house. I went through a divorce, and then one day uh, while I was going through that, I got called into to church. I was uh, the women's Bible study leader for about ten years before that, and. Uh, I got called into the pastor's office 
and the pastor said, either you're going to go out and tell them you're not going to do this anymore, or I'm going to. Wow. And I told him, I tell him, but it was like a shock to me. It, it was like the only thing I had left was the ministry thing. Uh -huh. And I went in the bathroom first and cried for a while, and then I went out, sucked it up, and and told him, and I walked out that day and never came back, never went back. Uh -huh. And um, so, so there I was, out there, you know, uncovered. Uh -huh. uh, well, during that time, uh, I met uh, my husband. Now, <laughs> my my Doug, <laughs> uh -huh. and he had just been through a Jezebel attack, almost identical to the one I had been through, and uh, with his ex-wife. Okay. And um, she had left him. Um, I'll just say for somebody else, but it, and it wasn't a man. Okay. <laughs> So I hope she's not watching. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but it's kind of a hidden thing. But anyway, that happened with him. And so we kind of got together and started talking about all that. And we realized we were in love. <laughs> uh -huh. And um, uh, so one night I was at his house. And that woman called over there. And I had gotten away out of the house by that time. Uh -huh. And was staying with my mom. And I was at his house. And um, she called me. And she said, could you, she had this voice, could you come over here? I really need you. I need you so bad. I'm thinking about Heather. And it was the whole thing about Heather. Uh -huh. And that soul tie in me said, I got to go over there and help her, you yeah. know? Yeah. And Doug had got on his game face by then. He, he knew what was going on. Yeah. And I said, I got to go. And he said, you don't, you better not go over there. He said, she's got a trap laid for you. Uh -huh. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I'm telling this all mixed up. It's not all in a sequence, but, but anyway, he said, what do you mean? I said, what do you mean? He goes, just, I'm telling you, she's got a trap laid for you. Uh -huh. And so I started, I said, I got to go. And I went out and he came outside in the parking lot. Everybody's going to think, well, hey. uh -huh. and, but he came out in the parking lot and picked me up bodily, carried me back in the house. And he said, you're not going over there. Uh -huh. And I said, but literally I would say he saved me from that night because the next day <coughs> she called and she said, I thought you were coming over. I had communion all set up for us. Yeah. Communion with the deaf wow. now. Wow. See what happened. I mean, that's what, that's what God does. Yeah. But while I was back at her house, I'm going to tell the weird parts now. Yeah. Uh, Doug and I had met by then, and I was going to IU... I was going to IU. I went to IU for about a week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I was, it was, so, I was such a mess that I couldn't think straight from all what was going on. And I ended up leaving, but, but uh, he was taking me up there and um, we would go like to Taco Bell afterwards and eat tacos and he'd bring me back home probably about nine o'clock or something. And that's when I was still staying at Karen and Tom's. Shoot, I did it again. Anyway, <laughs> I stayed at their house. And um, Lord help me. Um, I was still staying there. And when I came in one night, this woman ran. She was sitting there smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. And I, I mean, she didn't do that in front of ever. I didn't know she did. Wow. And she was sitting there smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. And I was like, I said, what are you doing? Uh. And she where she said, where have you been? And her voice just changed. I mean, it was like changed. Wow. And she ran across the room at me, knocked me on my back. 
And I was laying there, and I thought she was going to choke me to death because she was saying, where are you? Wow. And I screamed so loud that the neighbor came over. I still have, I shouldn't say that, but I still have back issues from that night. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I should be healed by now, you think. Uh -huh. but, um, but she knocked me down, and this woman finally called her mother and told her what had it happened or something. Uh -huh. And um, I ended up, that's when I ended up going to my mom's. But before that even, uh, I was in Heather's bed one night and her son laid, was beside me in his bed, his little twin bed. Uh -huh. And um, she slept in this other room and we always had all the doors closed and there's no way she could have heard me. And I, I was laying there Nelson, you won't believe this. The bed shook. The wow. bed shook. Wow. And all of a sudden, she comes barreling out of this room and opens the door. Oh, and I had called Doug because of the bed, because God said, call Doug. And I called Doug and I said, and have him pray. And I, he started praying. He was praying in the spirit. And all of a sudden, she comes barreling in the room. No way she could have heard me because I was whispering. Yeah. And she said, who are you talking to? And I went, wow. I, God told me to call Doug. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I mean, her voice had changed and everything. And she started screaming and yelling and screaming and yelling. And um, so that was another, another night. I don't know why I wasn't. Oh, I know why I wasn't out of there by then. Because she started telling me that my mother didn't want anything to do with me. She said my mother told her that she didn't want me to be there. And uh, mom told me later on, that was just a total lie. She just totally yeah. lied about all these people in my life saying they said this and they didn't want me there and right. all this kind of stuff. I was flabbergasted. Yeah. I believe, I'm, I'm going to say something here, and it's going to make some people mad, and I don't really care, because <laughs> it's true. Big truth. Yeah. I believe that even though there's no sex to do with that, you know, that, I think that's the beginnings of, of a homosexual. Yes. Yeah. It can be the beginnings Absolutely. of it. I'm not saying all all Jezebel yeah. spirits cause is no, but I'm saying but there's always it could go there if it yeah. if there's it really, sexual, really there's and always a sexual it's, perverseness. There's always a sexual perverseness that comes in with Jezebel. And oftentimes people get the Jezebel spirit because they're touched sexually inappropriately when they're young. So if they've ever had incest or they've ever had anyone touch them inappropriately or molest them, then that brings the spirit of Jezebel in. And so if it's, you know, if it's perverse enough, well, oftentimes they have a lot of uh, issues with their father or mother, then that will turn them to where they are, either gay or lesbian, because of that. But it's always normally a sexual side of Jezebel that's perverse, it's not pure. And, 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 and people that are married, you know, have a Jezebel and an Ahab spirit. I always say whenever they have sex, they're bringing together two demonic spirits together and it's perverse, it's not pure, it's not intimacy. So there's so many marriages out there where they're not at all experiencing what God really wants for them. And when you get delivered from those spirits, which is what my ministry does, is get people delivered, then Amen. you have intimacy. But yeah, continue. Your first book that I read, um, I forget which one. Restored to Freedom. The, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, it tore me up. I, I mean, I cried all the way through that book. I felt like I lived through that, you mm -hmm. know, Exactly, and I had I had never read anybody that had been through a lot what I had been through, you know, mm -hmm. at that time, and I just was like, and, uh -huh. and I couldn't read it without crying. I mean, I'd have to shut it because I couldn't uh -huh. hardly deal with it. Yeah. But um, I want to say this too: before all this happens, even started happening, God called me into a season of prayer. I mean, like, I would go in the church probably 9 o'clock in the morning, and I would lay in the floor till maybe 12 or 1 every day. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time, God just taught me 
I thought I was going to go in there with my prayer list and God just taught me how much he loved me and uh, who I was in him. And he showed me what he did for me. And, and it, it was crazy. I mean, that's where I just learned about God. Uh -huh. And I, this went on for about two or three months. And um, that was just before that. And I, I will say this, if I hadn't have been obedient to do that, I don't think I would have made it through the next 10 years. That time and that foundation of knowing God loved me kept me sane, Yeah, I guess, uh, during the next 10 years because I lost my ministry. I lost my husband. I, at the time, I lost um, so much. I lost um, uh, my reputation. Another thing that she did while we, when we did that was she went, my husband was meeting with all these pastors in town and they were trying to get some unity going on. Uh -huh. <laughs> that spirit did not like that at all. Yeah. And so she went around and made up stories about him to where, mm. uh, to where they, she would tip pastors. Yeah. I mean, she was friends with all these pastors. Yeah. So she went to these, these people and told them, you know, lies on him right and uh, that busted that whole thing up yeah and so you know it was crazy it was like yeah and i'll say this i'll say this too so what jezebel spirit wants to do is it wants to spread these lies it's like academy award-winning lies that nobody mm -hmm. would believe that it wasn't the truth they would assume that it was and it can literally right. shut down ministries shut down churches shut down individuals ruin their reputations for what they truly are and and, and and then also that the, they expect you not to speak about it to anybody about what you do. Because normally that spirit will try to get you to feel like, well, gee, I can't tell anybody about this. I'm supposed to keep all this dirty laundry, hush, hush. And so then it yeah. never gets exposed. And then when the truth is exposed. Yeah. It brings shame. Yeah. It brings a lot of shame. Yeah. And I, you know, I, if for a long time, I didn't want to admit that I could have been uh swayed by that spirit or whatever can't come under that spell or whatever you want to call it right i didn't want to do it because it was uh embarrassing to me and probably 10 years or 12 until finally uh one of the guys that was basically at that church i was at he was the head of the full gospel businessmen's and he asked me to come and speak at that uh -huh. <laughs> that's another whole story when that happened, that day, the day before, I turned on TV and there was somebody on there talking about forgiveness. And I thought, God, are you trying to tell me I need to forgive her and all that? And which I had in my, you know, I had said I forgive her, blah, 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 told her that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I said, are you trying to tell me? And I went to take my walk. And uh, I actually drove down to the to the ballpark that I walked around and stuff at that point. Uh -huh. And I drove down there and there was this woman walking, <laughs> walking toward the ballpark. And I came up behind her and she had that, this woman had a distinct walk. She had the same hair. She had the same body. She, and I thought it was her. And I thought, Oh God, this, are you, are you trying to tell me I need to stop and pick her up and tell her I forgive her and make before I go to speak on this? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. So I pull up, I turned around, and when I got about this far from this woman, her face turned into a demon, a demon. Wow. And I mean, teeth, they she had teeth like down to here. It wow. was like, and hair was like, went crazy. It was, wow. it was so crazy. And I instead of being the being the spiritual giant that I am I I went <laughs> <laughs> I just I just drove and I ran got out of the car and I ran in the house and slammed the door and locked the door yeah and I was like oh my gosh wow. you're trying to scare me out of doing that and I'm gonna testify about you yeah <laughs> and, yeah and so I get to the full gospel meeting of course, these guys were in on letting me go from the church uh -huh. at the time because they believed her lies. Yeah. And I get there, and he's the head of this thing. 
and all of a sudden he whispers to me and he says, what are you going to talk about? And I said, well, I just thought I'd talk about that Jezebel experience I went through. And he said, you don't have to tell all that dirty stuff. Ah, wow. I went, okay. <laughs> I said, well, that's what I got ready to tell. Yeah. And so I got up there and did it anyway. I should have probably not did it. I mean, maybe I should have came under authority at that point. But it was like God saying, you do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I did it. Yeah. And people got delivered that day. Amen. I mean, I was like, woo, Amen. glory to God. And say but this, so, for yeah, several so, so. years after Doug and I got married, even, and I hadn't seen her in a while, she would show up. She, she would show up at ball games that my husband was, well, not ball games, but wrestling matches that my husband was coaching. Uh -huh. Why? I have no, she would, they would show up. I would be in the, the restroom at Walmart and she'd walk in the restroom. Oh man. I mean, wow. <laughs> Wow. And I finally, I just, one day I walked across that gym and I said, you've got a spirit. I mean, I had to stand up to it and say, you've got a spirit and you need delivery. Yeah. And her husband was like, oh, that's a joke. I said, no, it isn't a joke. Because uh -huh. he was, I mean, he was walking in Ahab's spirit. Yeah, right. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. And she would scream at him. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. Yeah. And um. so... She followed me around, and finally, this lady, this wonderful lady, that we went to church with them for a while between church, when we were between churches, and they always prayed in the spirit. They would do a whole service praying in the spirit for people. Yeah. And um, anyway, her son was like uh, on the N double A C, not N double A C P, N C double A championship. Matt Howard when when Butler won. You remember oh, yeah. that? Yep, I remember Butler that. Butler won the championship. Well, Matt Howard was her son. Oh, okay. And he's in, he lives in Israel now, by the way. Okay. But anyway, uh, Linda, I love Linda to pieces. She's one of those people, like, that hugs you, and you just know you've been hugged, you know, and, and it's just God hug. And uh, we were talking about that episode when I went through that, and she said to me, she said, here's what we're going to do. She said, we're going to fast and we're going to pray, me and you. And we did. Uh -huh. We fasted three days. And I never saw that woman again after that. She never showed up again. Huh. Never. And I saw her one time about a year ago. Okay. And I didn't feel that. It was kind of weird. I, I was almost like I could talk to him and not feel that the anything. Yeah, you didn't feel was, you didn't feel controlled by that spirit anymore because I knew I was delivered, you know, yeah, from it. Right. And uh, since then, I've had several other attacks from that spirit, but you know, there's more to it than just that. I I could. Uh, it was terrible. I would go over the park uh, when I was after I left. Uh, her house, I would go to the park and I would walk around and I didn't know what to pray. I would just say, God, I need you. Yeah. God, I need you. I want all my relationships to be right no matter what. Yeah. And he, he, he made them right. I mean, yeah. he really did. Yeah. He made them right. And, um, let, of course, Doug me, and I got married yeah, uh, during let, that time. Let me explain real quickly for those that are watching, because there's some people that don't um, follow me just so they understand. So a person will receive the Jezebel spirit because of a couple of things, either having wounds from their childhood, from their father or their mother, or sexually violated, or their step, you know, stepfather, stepmother, or others. Anytime you have any type of sexual violations, uh, any time of wounds from your father or mother, your rejection, growing up as an only child, what will happen is you start to have thoughts that come in from the enemy telling you that you cannot trust men if you've been hurt by a man that all men are like your father so you therefore you end up wanting to control people and tell them what to do because you don't trust the holy spirit you don't trust the lord and you can still operate in the gifts you can operate in prayer
pray in tongues. You can uh, be prophetic. Oftentimes, people that are prophetic, very prophetic, will be struggling internally with that voice that, that's called the Jezebel spirit. Jezebel spirit is comprised of control, manipulation, fear, anxiety, uh, sexual stuff. It's perverse, lust, jealousy. All those demonic spirits come underneath the strong man of Jezebel. And then there's the Leviathan spirit that's prideful. It's in Job 41. Causes people to be prideful, causes them to be um, arrogant, and uh, causes them to twist the truth in their mind. And you can get sickness because of that. It wraps around your spine. So you have back pain, neck pain, insomnia, fibromyalgia, headaches, all this stuff that comes with that. So in order to get delivered from the spirits, which is what my ministry, Restored to Freedom, does, is the person has to truly choose to forgive all those that have hurt them. If they have any bitterness in them, that spirit will stay and it will not go. And the same thing with their pride. They have to humble themselves. Uh, you do those two components, you can get delivered from it. And you're no longer tormented in your mind anymore. And then you can be off the charts anointed. Because then the anointing will flow freely. Otherwise, you will never have peace in your life. You'll never have a healthy marriage. And uh, it's the number one reason for strife in marriages. And the number one reason for a church not growing. The number one reason why churches split is because of that. So... Um. I want to say a couple things about that Jezebel spirit uh, that I've learned since. One of the things is when a Jezebel spirit is just about to be uncovered or revealed, it will always cover itself by discrediting the one who is the instrument of its demise. Yes. So it has to it has to discredit you and make you look unspiritual. Yes. And uh, to the people around you. Right. Uh, you know, and... I thought that whole time that I was, it was me and I, it was all about me and it was, but one night, a few years after that happened, we sat down with this woman that had ran around with her since I left uh -huh. and was her friend then. And she literally, she told me, she said, she's done this since high school. And she said, when I was running around with her this last time, she had her friends believing that she was such a fallen down drunk that she they had her put in an institution for alcoholism. Hmm. And she said one day, uh, no, I better not tell her. It's That's just yeah. unbelievable what they'll go to any lengths to keep. That's what we're seeing in the. In, in this deal with Kavanaugh right yes, now. Yes. Kavan is that right? Kavanaugh? Kavanaugh. Yeah, Brett Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. Yeah. We're seeing the Jezebel spirit raising up and trying to discredit him. Yeah. Yes. Because he's going to be, he's going to stop abortion. Hopefully he'll yeah. stop abortion. Yeah. He'll, he'll be able to. I, I know that it's going to go to the states and all of yeah. that. Yeah. But. And and Trump, it's going to be a, and Trump wants to yeah. expose and go after the and, and and the Obamas. Exactly. And the We're seeing the Jezebel spirit yes. all over yes. the United States right now. And, Le and Leviathan. It's unbelievable. And, and lying Leviathan is a twisting spirit. Yes. This yes. last Jezebel attack I had, this thing rose up, that Leviathan spirit. It twisted my words told people yeah. I said stuff that I didn't say. These people won't speak to me now. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And I, I'm going. I didn't even. I wouldn't have. I, I know my care. I know I wouldn't have said something like that. Yes. But these yeah. people believed it. Right. Because this person was such a sweetie. Right. That's that's it's, why. That's why you have to look at their fruit over time. Because if you look at it in a short period of time they can act all sweet and nice and have some good fruit but if you look at it over a year or two years it will start having stinky fruit and you'll be able to say wait a minute i'm not going to listen to that that's a lie that person lies and that's why like people will try to come against me or come against you it's like you have to look at the person's fruit over time you know if they are pure you're going to see pure fruit you're going to see good fruit and you're going to have people get set free delivered prophecies are going to be on target those that have the bad fruit, you'll see it over time as well. So that's why it's really hard because you want to believe everything you hear from someone is they're telling you the truth. But those that have Jezebel are extremely good liars and it's so hard to trust yeah. them and hard to see through that. And that's why we're seeing the lies told about people right now. Mm -hmm. um, 
anyway, we've, we've had something happen to us recently like that. Uh -huh. And not that one I just told you about, but to my, even to my husband, mm -hmm. about my husband and um, tried to ruin his reputation. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was just out of, it, it really, it, it was like an offshoot of what's going on right now in the government. It was like this person heard this stuff and just, yeah, it, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, um, talk about how you get, how I got out of it, out of this mess, you know. Okay. Uh, one, I had a praying mother <laughs> that yeah. saw the spirit. And uh, this person would walk up to her. She said he walked up to her in the restaurant one time, and dug her fingernails into her when I was in the restroom. Wow. And said, went, ha, 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 ha. Oh, my God. And my mom said, to, my mom went, take your hands off of me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> wow. And, I mean. I've noticed that. Uh, I'll say this, too. I've noticed you that, have too. To hear, in, in several churches. Uh, I've noticed this in several churches where there's this, you know, beautiful worship going on. But, yet you can hear some cackling coming out of their voice their, 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 um, when they speak. It's like, it's a cackling. I've heard that there was a, actually it was a church in uh, Texas I was at where they were worshiping music that everybody would listen to and love. But yet when they were acting, you know, they were acting essentially not normal because that spirit was causing them to be manifesting. And I could pick up on it and discern it. Some people couldn't, but I'm like, that's like a witch's laugh. I could, I could see that. I could, I could, I could hear it, but a lot of people couldn't perceive it. And they're just like, oh no, they're just having Oh fun. yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. You can hear it in the spirit. Um, I was going to tell about this spirit, I, the Jezebel spirit. One night I was <laughs> at a prayer meeting of all things, and I looked up and I saw this spirit standing in the corner, and the spirit looked like Pharaoh. Uh -huh. And I went, God, what is that? And he said, that's the spirit of Jezebel standing in the house of the Lord. Yep. And I said, okay. Well, I didn't understand it, and I prayed about it, and I I went, I, of course, I announced it that night. I went, there's this, uh, no, he said jealousy. I'm sorry, not Jezebel. Jealousy, okay. the spirit of jealousy. Yeah. It looked like Pharaoh. And I went to church that next week, and we were having a real breakthrough in the worship at that point. And all of a sudden, God said to me, he said, see what's happened? I said, what? And he said, as soon as the worship starts to break through the atmosphere, he said, that spirit of Pharaoh raises up. There's my husband. It raises up. And he said, uh, it tries to stop the worship. It'll break up the work. It'll bring jealousy into the worship team. It'll bring this and it'll bring that. And um, he said, it, it wants to stop it. And he said, the reason it looks like Pharaoh, he said, because when my people left Egypt, he said, Pharaoh raised up because he was jealous because they were going to go worship me. And he said, they were going to, they were going to worship me. And I told him, let him, let my people go to be free to worship me in the, in their desert, desert. Yeah. He said, he don't want my people. He don't want my people worshiping me in their desert experiences. He doesn't want them to find that oasis in the middle. And so he raises up and pursues them. Ah, uh, yep. And uh, wants to stop them from the, doing the worship, from true worship in spirit and in truth. Right. And so, you know, that spirit is trying to stop me and it, and it It'll do it. I yeah. mean, it can. I, I, I remember but... I, was, I was in a healing room situation, and uh, it wasn't my healing room. It was another one. And they would not let us. Like, I could discern things that was going on in the person, and I wanted to get right to the issue. They're like, well, you can't tell them they have demons. Don't you dare tell them that. I'm like, well, well wait a minute. But, but they do. You know, I have a solution. And they would not allow me to do that. They, they just pray for the owies. I'm like, pray for the owies, but it's a spiritual thing. And, the, and they, they, they shut me down, so I couldn't do it. So then the Lord gave me my own healing rooms. Or so now you're going to flow in the whole Holy Spirit. 
you're going to be able to get right to the issue. And so people started getting delivered. And then they started traveling all over the country, coming there because they were desperate for getting delivered. And uh, Amen. So I'm like, hello, like ma a majority of this physical stuff we're going through is spiritual. We have to get One delivered my... from the spirits first, then you can get healed. So, yes. yeah. One of my friends here, like, got up and drove down drove down there on a saturday one morning i never will forget that oh yeah uh, she called me she goes i already went down there because i was going to speak to, at your church that next week or right. whatever but yeah but to um I, I was saying you have to hear the lord you you can't start listening to other voices number yeah. one you have to hear the lord because if you start listening to the voice of jezebel uh if you're not if you haven't discerned discerned it yet if you are a prophet or you're prophetic, you're going to get hit with this. It goes with the territory. I'm just saying it yeah. goes with the territory. Yeah. Uh, and you have to worship. You have to worship through it. That 10 years I was coming out of I had to get in the Psalms. I would get in the Psalms. One night, Doug and I were down in, the, in, the, in his living room. And I went into a vision. And I saw myself down in this hole. And I was in this hole, and it looked like a light started walk, going across it, and across it, and across it. And I heard this song. It went, da 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 We've since made a song out of that, but uh. I started, it, it, and it went, come out of darkness. And it gave me all those words that I just read in Proverbs earlier. Come out of darkness. Come out of darkness into the light. Uh -huh. Here is a way. And then it said, please listen to me. Don't listen to yourself. In all your ways, acknowledge me. Yeah. And I will lead you to show you the way. And so when I came out of that vision, my husband was sitting at the keyboard playing the music that I just heard in my vision. Wow. wow. <laughs> and so we ended up making a track to that. We sang it for a lot of years. I haven't sang it for a long time, but yeah, that was God. Total, a total God was saying, this is the way you've got to listen to me. Don't listen to Jezebel. Don't listen to yourself. Don't listen to this flattering woman. Yeah. Um, you have to, you have to worship. You have to come in, you really have to come under some kind of headship. You need to be under headship because uh, that spirit will beat yeah. you up. If you're, yeah, I'll, I'll read if this you're too. Not. I don't, don't know if you've ever have correlated this scripture with Jezebel or not, but Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, These six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, that's Leviathan. A lying tongue, Jezebel. Hands that shed innocent blood. Jezebel, a heart that devises wicked plans, Jezebel, feet that are swift and running to evil, Jezebel, a false witness who speaks lies, Jezebel, and one who sows discord among brethren, Jezebel. So God hates that spirit. Yes, yeah. he does hate that spirit. And that's why, you know, we don't hate the person. Right. But we can hate the spirit and we can hate what it does. Yes. Because we, David said, I hate what you hate every day. Yeah. And I love what you love every day. And so we're allowed to hate that spirit. We're allowed to hate right. the, the devil. Uh, some people say the devil's going to get saved in the end. Well, I've got news for you. <laughs> If he goes and gets saved, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> I want to be the one to put him in the pit yeah. and put the lid on him, you know. Yeah. Because I, I always say, that's one of my sayings, I hate the devil. I yes. hate the devil. Yeah. I hate what he does. I hate what he does to people. Yes. Uh, but this spirit will soul tie you. The Back to the doll thing, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. I was so sick, uh, and Doug said, you got to go out and burn that doll. He said, you got to get rid of it. Yeah. And I took it out again and set it on fire and cried and cried and cried. Yeah. But it broke something off of me. I was, I, I mean, I had some kidney problems at that time. Uh -huh. That night we went to sing at some full gospel thing or something. And the guy that was the head of the state full gospel chapter, he said uh, to me, not to me, he just said, somebody in here has a kidney issue, 
and he said, you're being healed right now. And I was healed from that time forward. Okay. And, you know, I've got awesome. some kidney issues right now, but that's been 25, seven years ago. Yeah. So, um, you know, God, I had to burn that thing because it was, again, soul tie. Jezebel will soul tie you to her by giving you things. Get rid of the things. Yeah. I don't care what it is. I don't care how nice it is. I don't care. It's a soul tie. Yeah. And you, every time you look at it, you think of that person. Right. And uh, it, it brings back all the, all the memories. Yeah. Um, and those, those that have parents that have Jezebel, I've seen this time and time again. If you have a mom or a dad that has the Jezebel spirit, they will hurt you, obviously, control you, manipulate you, and you can pick it up because of that. But you have to be careful because what will happen is they will tell you lies that your brother or your sister said this or said that, and they didn't. And they'll put a wedge yep. between you and your siblings to get you to hate your siblings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what next thing I was going to say. You know, you have to, for, for one thing, you have to repent of people pleasing. Mm -hmm. And Ahab spirit, the Ahab spirit, of course, you yeah. teach about that. And yeah. I need, I haven't read that book. I hate to admit it. Yeah. But that one on Ahab, I haven't read. Yeah, I need to. Ahabs don't like confrontations. They would rather just let people get their way. That are the stronger. That's me. Spirit. That's how I would. Yeah, because then you want to get along with people. It'll save a fight, save an argument. But it's hard to be a spiritual leader when you're an Ahab because. You know, I was a stronger Ahab. You know, I had some Jezebel Leviathan, I, I say, before I got set free completely in 2008. But um, that's exactly what an Ahab wants to do is get along with people. And oftentimes they let people do things they shouldn't be. They should stand up and say, no, we're not going to tolerate that. That's sin. That is wrong. And they just, okay, I'll just let it go. We'll go watch that R-rated movie or we can go ahead and do this or watch this whatever. So I'm seeing a lot of people are going through some of this stuff. Yeah. Right now, it, yeah. Um, you, it, uh, the Lord told me to look what He said in His Word in Revelation. Where I can't remember where at in Revelation, but it says, "Do not tolerate Jezebel." Revelations two eighteen through twenty three. <laughs> right, and yeah. and I it you you can't tolerate it. No. You can't give it an inch because it'll take a mile. Yeah. Trust me. Yes. It'll get. It'll take a mile. Yeah. At the end of this thing, when I moved in with my mother, she, I told her I did to leave me alone. I yeah. didn't want her around. And Doug and I were getting ready to get married. We were going to get married in my mom's house. We had to have armed guards at not arm, but guards in our door at our wedding, literally, for this woman not to come in and go crazy. And uh, wow. one wow. day I was in there at mom's, and and she came and. Um, Knocked on the door at seven. She knew I liked iced tea and she would bring me iced tea to her house all the time because she knew I liked it. So at seven o'clock in the morning, she's beating on this door. And I mean, beating on the door. And I wouldn't go to the door. I said, I'm not going to the door. She kept beating until we knew that she was waking the neighbors up. So I, I said, I'll go. So I finally go to the door, come in. And she starts using the F word. I mean, all over my mom's house. And she... And I, she handed wow. me, had, I bought you tea, I bought you this. And she knocked the tea out of my hand and threw it all over my mom's curtains. We had to, I mean, I said, uh, get out. You're going to get out now. Wow. And, and I said, don't you come yeah. back here ever again or say those words in my mom's house. I mean, you get out because my mom's like, <laughs> but, um, yeah. but for real, I mean, she, if I would have said, oh, that is so nice of you to bring that tea, you know, right. blah, blah, blah. she she would have had her foot in the door. You cannot yeah. let Jezebel get her foot in the no. door, period. No. You give I mean, you, have, take you can't a talk, don't no. feel bad because of it. Don't feel like you're not no. spiritual because of it. Just right. kick them out. You've got to get it. Right. You've got to get away from them, period. Like and, die boys used yeah. to say. And there's, and there's people that have parents that have this that you want a parent, you want a father and a mother. And if you come underneath that spirit, you're gonna be controlled, you're gonna be so depressed and sad because you're yearning for their love, but you'll never get their love until they get delivered from that spirit. And so there's so many people I see that are like, I'm gonna go back to my mom and my dad because I miss them, or, or I'll go over there because I'm supposed to, and they make you feel guilty. Or, and you can yeah. never break free 
to, to, to come into the fullness of who you are in Christ because you're always going back to that spirit in them. So sometimes you have to say, I'm going to love you from afar. You know, you can maybe talk to them once in a while, but you can't until they get delivered from that spirit. You know, you, you can't keep right. hanging around them. Right. I had to put distance in between me and her because if I didn't, that soul tie was so, I had to break the soul tie off. Um, I heard a sermon during that time. I can't remember who preached it, but we were in Arizona on our honeymoon. And I heard the sermon about the cattle that with the tumors and how they load as they went. And they were talking about how sometimes your flesh wants to do this because of the soul tie, yeah. but you've got to turn and low as you go. You're like, oh, I don't want, but you've got to turn right. and low as you go and just and walk away, walk away from it and yeah. get back into the presence of, get yeah. the presence back, you know, in your life. Yeah, there's a, and, um, there's a woman that had a question here. I'm going to answer this. They say, who, who is sick? Those that have Jezebel or those that get Jezebel, basically. And I'll, I'll say this. I've seen where the, the men are married to women that have Jezebel. The men can normally stay healthier than if a woman who's married to a man with Jezebel. I've seen so many women that have a man that has Jezebel that they start to get sick. And some of them have died because that spirit yeah. comes in and controls and verbally abuses them to the point they don't want to live anymore. And they want to die. And then the enemy gives them that. I've seen people that have died in their 40s. Or a person gets remarried to a, husband, to a wife that's healthy. And then they get sick. So, but then ultimately the Lord will deal with those that have Jezebel. And he will bring them. It says, I'll put them on a sick bed and kill their children. In Revelations 2, 18 to 23. Children represent the symbolicness of it. But it says, I know that I search the hearts and the minds. So, so many people that look and, and appear to be good you know, that are in the church, that are even, not even in the church, but um, the Lord searches their hearts and their minds. That's why it says, Lord, Lord, in, in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Lord, Lord, look at all that I've done for you. I've, I've you know, I've, I've uh, healed the sick and I've cast out demons in your name and all these things in your name. And, and the Lord says, depart from me. I don't know you, you know, doers of, of, of iniquity and uh, lawlessness. Why? Because he knew their hearts and their minds and they were not good. So just because a person looks like they're good in front of the church, the Lord knows their hearts. The Lord knows who they are behind closed doors. And if they're hurting people, have nothing to do with them, you know. And, and I know too many people stay together in relationships with people in marriage just for marriage's sake. And they come under that Jezebel spirit, and then they will never accomplish what the Lord wants for them. I had to separate. I didn't want to, you know. And I went through six years of extreme hell and abuse. And then once I separated, the Lord said, now I'm going to bless you with a worldwide ministry. It's going to grow rapidly. And it did. Now, had I not done that, I would have stayed married with, for marriage's sake. I probably would have been, I don't know, suicidal, you know, after all the control, manipulation, and abuse that I went through. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, You know, there's a lot of, also, uh, when you're going through that, there's a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it tries to confuse everybody and everything around you. It's, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Le Levi it, it can it can tear a church up in a just a little bit. It, Absolutely. The thing of it is, when you start confronting it, I hate confronting it. Mm -hmm. The last thing I went through, we some of us got together and prayed about it, and um, I knew then when we were doing it, it was like all hell was going to break loose. Yeah. I knew, yep. I knew it was, and it has. Yes. But. People been getting set free. Yes. You know, when I went through it, I I God had told me in that when I, in that church I was just in ministry. I was like, I would pray and say, Oh God, I wish there was forty eight hours in a day, or you know, stuff like that, so I could get more done and and all that. And all of a sudden, you know, he I was laying there in the floor and I saw this vision. And in the vision, the four walls of the church fell out. And he said, this is, your whole head is inside of this church. He said, this is not the church. The church is out there. And he said, I'm sending you out. Yes. Well, I would have never gone on my own. But through this Jezebel experience, he pulled me out of religion. Yes. And those spirits, Jezebel to me, and I saw, had a dream one time where Jezebel, uh, the spirit of religion and witchcraft were all working in tandem together. Yeah. Uh, and I think there was a 
Leviathan too. Yeah. But they were all working. It was almost like a, you know, they were working together like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit or something. But they were. Yes. Of course, they're all they're all under the devil right. or whatever. Right. But, yeah. but um. But. Yeah, that I, dream was crazy because I was trying to get to my ministry in that dream. There was women that needed set free. Yeah. And I had to crawl through these register ducts to get to this upstairs room. And when I got up there, there were those three spirits. Two of them were women. One was a man. Okay. Uh, for some reason, one was a man. Two, two were women. Yeah. And, uh, but the fact that I had to get low and get into a tight space to get there to back down to my people that yeah. were waiting down there to be set free it speaks to me of prayer the the fact that we have to get into prayer we have to get right. uh, into a place of intimacy with the lord and not religion and that religion will take you will cause you just to oh i'm doing this and i'm doing that and i'm you know, I'm I'm walking, I'm praying, I'm doing all my stuff, I'm right. I'm doing all right. my formulas, and that's why God told me. He said, I, I don't work in formulas. Yeah, I don't. This, he said I'll people have this. tried to make a formula out of me, but I'm not a formula. Yeah. I don't work in formulas. I'll say this too: that oftentimes the Lord will give you dreams to let you know you're dealing with Jezebel or Leviathan. You'll have a dream of an alligator, for instance. All oftentimes are visions of alligators if you're dealing with Leviathan spirit, because that's what it is in Job 41. It's got scales. It's rows of scales are its pride. It, it's the king over all the children of pride. So it's one of the kings, right. one of the strong men. It's Leviathan. People that have Jezebel oftentimes have dreams of snakes, you know, and they see snakes all the time. Um, and Jezebels always have Leviathan, always. They will never not have it because it's a spirit of pride that comes in, you know, when they get hurt when they're younger. You know, again, they end up wanting to pay back all those that hurt them. You know, I had a man that was eight years old that his sister was 15, had sexually touched him inappropriately. So the voices he heard was, you can't trust women. You cannot trust women. So he got married to a beautiful woman, very sweet. But for like years and years and years, he would call her every day because he didn't trust that she was not off with another man. And they were on the verge of divorce. And I finally explained to him, and he said, Nelson, I have never told this to anyone, but my sister molested me when I was eight. She was 15 and he got delivered instantly. Because, and he got yeah. healed. He got healed with stuff instantly on his chest and his arm. And so, uh, so many times there's kids we've gotten molested or incest or anything that's sexually perverse. And then that comes on. Also, I'll say Freemasons. Anyone's got a well tub that's in Freemasons or Shriners. You have to be a 32nd degree Freemason to become a Shriner because of the oaths mm -hmm. they make to Satan once they get to a, a higher level. It's all, their, it's right. all about money. That brings in the right of the Leviathan spirit to curse them down the bloodline. So a lot of us that have had you know, relatives that are in Freemasons, you'll have back pain and neck pain, insomnia, and diseases a lot because of that. Also Eastern star for the women because they're making these oaths to the enemy. So I'm exposing all this because that's what's going on. This is the truth. Once I've discovered all this, all right. I'm like, we need to know about this. You know, we're not gonna be quiet anymore. That's what's going on, of course, in politics is Trump is trying to expose all this, and man, the media wants to shut it down, twist the truth, Leviathan on him. You know, it's just, it's evil. And uh, Trump's trying to do you the know, best he can under extreme circumstances. I always say that, you know, you must be anointed to do this because <laughs> otherwise you would be, that. I don't know how I you, do I don't know too. how you stand and all that. I mean, I really don't, but because I know the backlash you must get. Yeah. But but you seem to just breathe. I don't know, but uh, you seem to. I have fun. <laughs> I know you do. And what the Lord does, he's, he's but trying. But see, you're not religious. You're not a, re no. it's not religious. It's no. a relationship not. with the Lord and you hear from the Lord. And yeah. that's what it is. That's what it takes to be able to discern that spirit. You can't discern it if you're in the, one of those spirits was a religious spirit Absolutely. that was in that board. Right. I mean that that spirit will bind you up. Yeah. I mean it make you want you to stay in a right here in this little place, you know. Right. And uh, never never fulfill your destiny. Yeah. You we've got to fulfill our destiny, and that's what that spirit those spirits want to stop. If yeah. it can't kill you, 
Yeah. Well, if they can't stop you from getting saved and getting filled with the Spirit, then it's going to try to stop you from doing yeah. your calling. It's really a spirit of distraction and disruption yeah. when you think about it. It tries to disrupt what God's doing in your life. It tries to stop you from doing uh, your ministry. Uh, you know, it, like I said, it, it's, it didn't stop me, but it slowed me down. I mean, of course, Doug was a pastor when I married him, so we had a church, and I, I just kept doing ministry, you know, yeah. basically in the church. But uh, I wasn't fulfilling my destiny. I was like 58 years old. Finally, God said, you need, you better go. Yeah. You know, or I tell you what, if we don't do that, we start, our bodies follow suit and start dying. Right. Yes. I, I mean, literally, if we're not in, if we're not doing what we were created to do, we're walking in, in this death under this, not in the kingdom, but in under Satan's domain, and yeah. we, our bodies start following suit yeah. to not fulfill in our destiny, and and it's like, well, what, you know, there's no point in us being here if we're not fulfilling our destiny according right. to, under God, you know what I mean? Right. And so, um, yeah, so many go to, so so many go the to enemy church. trying to stop us from doing that so we'll get sick and die, so yeah. that he can so, get rid of us. So basically. many that go to church that don't understand this stuff are just basically, the, the, the Satan's like, go ahead, keep going to church because you're not going to, if you, if you don't understand this, they're not going to get anything done. They're not going to, I mean, they can bring people into the church and say, okay, I'm giving my life to Christ. But then they get Jezebel in the church, you know, by these people that have never gotten their soul wounds healed. So what good is it? You know, the revivals can't break out until we get the church purified. That's why I wrote the book, Pure and Spotless, is to understand that the Lord knows the hearts and the minds. And if that's not pure, God knows it, and you're not, and, and you're, and you're not going to get into heaven. That's why I says, "Lord, Lord, I, you know, look at all I've done for you. I don't know you. Get get away from me, departure." You know, and and that's why is because we're not pure. We got to be pure and spotless. Once we get delivered, the first thing a church should do is get them delivered when they come in, and then teach them about their authority in Christ, and then develop the gifts and so forth. But that's not happening, and so the Lord's like, "I'm going to shut these churches down that are tolerating the spirit." He's trying to shut down uh, our voice. He's trying to shut down our de decrees and our declarations because we are, according to Psalm 24, we're the gates that allow heaven into the earth through what we speak and what we say. But it's all also talking about in Psalm 24 before it says, lift up your head, O you gates. Before that, yeah, it's talking about uh, he that has a, who's going to ascend to the hill of the Lord or that word hills promotion. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, the word heart there is mind, will and emotions. And yeah. it means those people with, he, and he said to me, he said that this, in this end time, the mind of Christ will be the mark of my people. And you remember when he sent the angel with the ink horn in to uh -huh. destroy some in the, he said, because they were saying God cannot do this. God, da, 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 da. God can't. And so he destroyed this bunch then. Yeah. But he said, but go put a mark on those that cry and sigh after the abominations that are in the earth. And yeah. so God is marking his people. Yes. With, with those that will purify their mind, those that will purify their mind so that his pure word can come out. And yeah. because what we say happens because yeah. we have that authority in the earth. Yeah. Nobody else has it but us. Right. And the enemy, this Jezebel spirit, these, these spirits that we talked about today, those are the spirits that are trying to stop yes. the prophetic voice. Yes. And we're all prophetic in some way. If you hear from God yes. and resound what he says, you're prophetic. Right. You, you don't have to be a prophet to be prophetic. Yes. And there's people out there that are prophetic that are not prophets. But the church is the voice of God in the earth. Yes. We're the voice, we're the arms, we're the leg, you know, we're his hands. We're all of that. And so we have to have pure thought. You know, you remember when his disciples uh, said, let's call fire down on, on yeah. these people. Let's right. call fire yeah. down. And he said, you don't know what spirit you're of. Yeah. And so God is trying to purify us from that kind of a... A mindset where we, you know, we just 
you know, kill them all and let God yeah. sort them out. Yes. He, want, <laughs> he yeah. wants us to be, he, he wants us to love our enemy. He, he wants a, and that all it takes is getting in the word and understanding the mind of Christ. Yes. And yes. we renew our mind with the word of God. And, and until you renew your mind, you're going to act like the devil. I'm yep. sorry. Absolutely. You know, you're just going to. Right. And so you, if you don't renew your mind, you're in trouble. And, right. and, and it says, if you don't put that back in you, those demons will come back 10 times worse. So you can get delivered all you want to. Right. But if you don't fill yourself back up with the word and renew your mind with the word of God, you are yep. going to go right back to that and it'll be yep. worse than it was before. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, yep. all people have Nelson to do can get you delivered, but you've got to keep you gotta walk delivering it out. yourself yeah. from that, yes. from your old mindsets. Yes. So, so you've done what? Hundreds of these Facebook lives before, right? Hundreds of them. Like this is your thousands Facebook live. How many Facebook lives have you done I now? I can't really hear you for some reason. I said, how many Facebook I'm sorry. lives have you done now? One. One. This <laughs> Just is her you. first guys this is her first time she's ever okay done i'm i'm out of my comfort zone <laughs> you're a natural <laughs> i'm coming I, out of my I, comfort zone i'm gonna start doing videos yeah. i prophesy you're gonna be doing hundreds and hundreds of these from now on because the lord wanted you to do this you know and you Amen. didn't want to and you were resisting and the lord's like spoke to me to bring you on and of course we had to do some technical stuff to get it to work but the lord did it and now look at this i mean there's so many people on here watching that um, they're going to want more. And so it's going to be awesome to get more of the word out because you've got a lot of truth in you. You know, you've been around the block. You've been exposed to these spirits and it's time to expose it worldwide, not just in our little towns that we live in. So, Well, thank you, Nelson, for having me. <laughs> hey, everybody. I love you. <laughs> awesome. I see. I'm, I'm seeing all your comments and... So <laughs> yeah, does anybody have any any questions for uh, Joelle? And you can go ahead and start asking some. I know we've been answering some of them on there, but um, so go ahead and we'll give you some time here. Uh, so when, where's your next ministry that you're going to? Well, I was supposed to have a conference next weekend, but it got canceled. Um, okay. So I'm telling everybody right now that was coming to my conference next weekend, it, it's canceled. And so uh, okay, but. Uh, the next thing I know I have is not till February, but stuff always comes up in, you know, in between. And um, but February I'm yeah. going to go to um, Lucille Orr's uh, ministry. She has a healing room up there, okay. and it's an old uh, nuns com convent place. Oh, and but wow. it's got a big room, and, and it's really really awesome. And I love those people up there. I've been up there twice, okay. and uh, me and Angie went up there uh, okay. one time, and. Yeah. Well, and, uh, well, I'll, I will so actually, that's in February, but I will actually be. In I don't know the date on it yet. Okay. Yet. It's going to be called Queen for a Day. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Well, yeah. glory to God. <laughs> I'm actually going to be in Indiana for a couple days, but I'm not doing ministry. It's uh, October 22nd through the 24th, and then uh, I will be gone for I don't know how long, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, You're a man of the. Ma traveling man yes <laughs> lord you were Our, born a traveling man <laughs> yes i can i can relate a lot to i guess paul and the journeys that he's done and staying in people's homes for i don't know half the time or more so all right here's some questions does jezebel ever act better for a while if it's about to be exposed yes it can act because it, when it knows it's going to be exposed it's going to act as sweet and i'm nice. trying to see someone yeah i mean i'm it's already up there so i um but that's one of the questions i've just read now let me see how do i survive with an antichrist narcissistic husband who hates god and torments me that's that well. spirit wants to kill you in your in your husband yes, that's why i always say if they will not get delivered the best thing you'll do is to separate for your own peace so you can live because literally if you stay in that toxic relationship that demon will continue to drive you to the point where either you're going to start having suicidal thoughts or you're going to start getting sickness in your body you know, so I stayed in the relationship I that I had because the Lord told me to, to go through it so I could have an extreme anointing for it, which is what I'm seeing now. Otherwise, I would have been gone probably within a year. Um, but uh, I know you want to stay married. That's your goal. But if a person's got a demonic That's spirit, you cannot come under that demonic spirit because otherwise you will never be able to do anything for the Lord and you can die. 
And then you look back at your life and say, what, what good was it staying married to a person that has a demon that wants to kill me when I did nothing for the Lord? So. Well, it's really hard, um, Nelson. Like when I went through my divorce, my mm -hmm. husband ran around and he, he was an alcoholic and mm -hmm. he hated, he didn't want anything to do with, you know, God and things uh -huh. of God. And, and um, but I prayed for so many years for him that when I finally gave up, I guess, which uh -huh. I felt like I, I, the enemy kept taunting me and saying, you gave up, you didn't do everything, you, you know, you, you could have done, you could have did this and you could have did that. Yeah. But uh, it was so weird because, you know, he had, he made good money and all that. And when I was getting ready to leave him, he used that, he would use that money to, uh, manipulate me right. and say, you know, you're never going to get any of my money, you know, da, 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 and all, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, one day the Lord spoke to me. I, uh, people don't believe this, but it's a true story. The Lord spoke to me and he said, if you go back to him for his money, you are no better than a prostitute. Oh my gosh, I yeah. got fainted. I oh thought, yeah, absolutely. If you go back yeah. for security and he said, right. You've got to learn to trust me. He said, didn't, I, didn't you ask me to be Jehovah Jireh, your provider? And I said, don't you say that all the time, he said. I said, yeah. yes, I do. And he said, well, now you're going to learn that I am your provider. And I'm telling you, I've never had so many clothes. I've never had so, I've never paid for a car. I've never, we don't, we've never paid for a house. We, God has uh -huh. always provided for us Amen. everything. Amen. And yes. he said, if you will do what I do, do I'll provide. And yes. he's opened up, I could go on and on about that. That is another whole testimony, but he has just every year, we would be out of work in the, in the um, summer and God would show me some way he would provide in the summer. And then I, I used to get real scared every, about every summer. I think, Oh, how, what are we going to do? What are we going to uh -huh. And every year he's provided some different way through the ministry basically. And he would say, you know, uh, but don't get dependent on one way. Right. Like if one person starts giving you money, don't depend on it. Yeah. You've got yeah. to depend on me and then yeah. I will give you what you need. Amen. And so, yeah. you know, Absolutely. now I'm, I look forward to the summer and go, I wonder what God's going to do this year. Yes. You know? Yes. And, yeah. and it's exciting. It's the good fight of faith. Amen. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I live on faith every day. I travel everywhere. I don't know where I'm going to be. You know, I love that. And it's fun. About you. It's like, look, the Lord blessed me because it's like I went through all this stuff I didn't want to go through, but I, I laid my life down for the Lord to do it. And then once I did that, now all these blessings happen. So I get to go to these fun places and beautiful backdrops and Facebook lives. And the Lord's like, you're like a kid again. I know. You're I'm a jealous. Kid again. Yeah. And, and that's what <laughs> I've got a jealousy spirit. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> and that's what the Lord said. He goes, I want to make people healthily jealous because. When you get delivered from Jezebel, Leviathan, Ahab, you get the childhood that was stolen and robbed from you repaid. You get the childlike innocence restored. And so I yes. feel like a kid. I have fun wherever I go, whomever I come into contact with. I love to have fun. You know, I feel like a kid, and I do. Like, I, I'm out here in Texas. I go for a walk down this road, and uh, it was just fun. I get to see beautiful sunrises, sunsets, and... Uh, um, you know, they have wild hogs here. I haven't seen a wild hog yet. I guess you have thousands of them. I'm like, I want to see a wild hog, you know, because I grew up with penned hogs, you know, in Indiana. But there's new adventures <laughs> that, um, and so he wants people to understand that what he's done for me, he'll do for you. And the same thing with Joelle, and she had to break free from that. You cannot tolerate it. And yeah. you get into fear and worry. The enemy will say, you can't do this. You'll never be able to buy this. Your kids aren't going to be provided for. So you stay stuck. And the Lord's saying, get unstuck trust me step out and then i will provide for you things you cannot even imagine you know a lot of people that are in, in relationships with their husbands and wives that that person if you give them i always say give them time to repent choose to to give them an option and say listen you know you need to get freed from the spirit this is what yeah. you have and if they blow you off completely the lord will release you from that and then you'll have something far, far greater. And then if, if you have your, your goal to serve the Lord, he'll bring you a new spouse. That's even you know, a thousand times greater you can imagine. And then you'll have an intimacy and a love. And 
it'll be a beautiful thing. So here's a question. How do you know, uh, <laughs> somebody just popped up. How do you know if your leadership in the church has Jezebel? I'll let you speak to that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to answer it? You say? Mm -hmm. um, I'll let you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they kind of want you under their thumb, so to speak. Um, yes, we need to be under headship, but if that per if those people aren't allowing you to flow in your ministry, uh, if they're jealous of you, if you get, uh, I was under this, uh, pastor one time who came into the prayer meeting and said to me, whispered in my ear and said, don't pray for me in here. He did not want to be exposed at all. And he, he said, don't pray for, he soon wow. died right after that. Um, wow. But, uh, I mean, he just dropped dead of a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but they want to control everything. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot to it. I mean, I could go on and on yeah. about that, but, I'll, I'll, I'll but I don't, too. yeah, I'll say this I, we have a good pastor now, but I'm just saying the one he, he's not like that, but, um, I'll say but this. I've so sat under some that are very yeah. controlling. So there's a woman that I know personally, this situation um, out West, and uh, she's very prophetic. She was starting to come into her ministry and her calling, and, and she was on Facebook Live, and she would see like thousands and thousands of people on there. Well, the pastor said, hey, you need to come under our headship, and you need to stop doing that because you're not ready yet to do that. And she was having thousands of people watch her, and she was speaking forth prophetic words. It was just a beautiful thing. And so she, she told me about it, and I'm like, L listen, I go, the Lord's telling me, do it. Your pastor's wrong. And so, but she was going to that church, and so it was really hard for her. She couldn't go to that church anymore if she wasn't going to listen to the pastor. So then she ended up stopping Facebook Live. She went back to that church, and after about six months, she felt so, you know, down, beaten down and controlled. And the Lord said, listen, you know, Nelson was right. right. Go back to Facebook Depression Live. Depression comes it, with she it. did. Now her ministry's yes her ministry is exploding now and she just came out on the elijah list uh, first time it's like that's what god wants to do with people is that you have to discern and hear the lord's voice clearly you can't be listening to man if man's got the jezebel spirit because he'll control and shut you down and how can you tell they'll, they'll they'll you'll feel and sense love if the person's doing it in a correct way if it's a controlling way you'll feel controlled you'll feel hurt and you'll know control. it Manipulated. Yeah. yeah. Manipulation is the is a tool. They the manipulation and um, it, it uh, recently I went through this thing where I was okay until I surpassed their ministry, so to speak. Yeah. And yeah. after that, it the jealousy hit, and it was yes. like. Yes. All hell I'll broke loose. Yeah, and a, uh, a couple people. They started manipulating me and all. Yeah, I shared this with, Sorry, a couple of narcissist, with a couple of narcissistic groups um, on Facebook. So there's some people asking questions. I'm going to answer this. Is narcissism under the spirit of Jezebel? Absolutely. That is what it is. It's the demonic spirit causing people to be very prideful, very arrogant, very controlling, manipulative. And of course, narcissists, the, the, the medical diagnosis is there's no hope for them. You know, they, they can't be changed. Well, they can be, but they have to humble themselves from the pride. They have to understand how they got that way. And that's through father wounds, mother wounds, sexual violations. That's what my ministry does, Restore to Freedom, is getting people delivered from that. And it says, why, another one, why does Jezebel attach itself to religion? If you want, you can answer that one. That's right. Um. Yeah, what if, you, if you want to respond, yeah. Why does Jezebel attach itself to religion? Why does what? Why does Jezebel you say? attach <laughs> itself to religion? Oh, because it can control in that arena. It, it, you know, it has a has a power control. Um, can control people. Yeah. Um, that's why we see these cults start up. I mean, 
you know, uh, people just wanting to manipulate other people. And yes. uh, I, I look at that sometimes. I'll see these shows about Jim Jones and all those people like that, and I'll think, how did that many people get that? But it's, right. like I said, it, they get away from the word of God and start listening to a man yes. instead. And, yes. you know, years ago, uh, I know Jimmy Swaggart's restored and all that now, but um, mm -hmm. years ago, we would follow Jimmy Swaggart everywhere he went. We would drive to Cleveland. We would drive to wherever he was, we'd go. And we thought there was nobody like Jimmy Swagger and that what he said was God. And yeah. see, leaders, God told me one time, he said, you, you leaders, you people that say you're prophetic, you people that say you're apostles, blah, blah, blah. He said, when you say that, he said, automatically people, a lot of people, not everybody is this, I shouldn't say stupid, but but they believe Okay, Joe Allen, um your feed is frozen right now. I don't hear you. So I don't know if uh your video feed is shut down. Okay, well, hmm, she is gone. Um, I'll try to see if I can bring her back on. Let's see here. Nope, I don't think so. All right, well, we'll go ahead and end um, on that note. So again, thank you very much, Joellen, for joining. Um, and hopefully you guys uh, can share this on your timelines to help other people understand you know, what the Jezebel spirit means, how it looks, what it causes people to operate in, and uh, how to get set free. You know, again, if you want to get set free, you can go out to Nelson Schumann on YouTube, and I've got deliverance videos out there where you can get delivered anytime you want. Um, I lead you through the prayers. I explain how you get the spirits, and uh, we've seen thousands and thousands around the world set free from this. Those that have what would be considered narcissist personality disorder. You know, you can get delivered from it. It's not easy. They have to humble themselves. They have to understand it. So I explain that so they can understand it. So anyway, thank you so much, guys, for watching. And, uh, and be blessed. Um, understanding and uh, having knowledge is what we need to know in order to live. Because people perish for lack of knowledge. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Love you. See ya. Bye-bye.